Hello everyone and welcome back to video number five. So this is our final video for extinctions. I'm afraid it's not going to be a very cheerful one because we will be looking at the sixth mass extinction, the one that may be occurring right now driven by human activity. So let's jump in and have a look at this. In the late quaternary, so that's from about 50,000 to about 3,000 years ago, 65% of mammal genera weighing over 44 kilograms, i.e. those with large body masses went extinct and that's shown in the graphs on the left hand side here for different continents the um the line here shows the number of species and the black um curve shows the um extinctions on these different continents and you can see that in some cases large proportions of some of our greater body masses have gone extinct during this time period um climate has relatively quickly warmed from being cold and arid um, relatively recently to the warm interglacial period in which we are sitting today from about 11,000 years ago we um, call it the Holocene um, which is warmer um, and an interglacial relative to that Pleistocene period and in uh, co coincident with this change there is reasonably well documented um, coincidence between the timing of extinctions and the arrival of modern humans Obviously, remember, correlation does not equal causation, and exactly how these extinctions occurred remains a matter of debate in current study. But nevertheless, we know a lot of our big mammals, our megafauna, have gone extinct very, very recently since the humans arrived on the scene. Megafauna often act as keystone species within the, the ecosystems of which they are a part, and thus their disappearance is bad news no matter what. So we know that we're in a bit of a trouble, speak a bit of a trouble, a bit of trouble speaking in the relatively recent kind of geological time up until today. Okay. And you may be saying, but we're more aware of the impact we have on the environment since the 1960s, 70s, or 80s. Um, so that has stopped, right? I'm afraid that is wrong. If we plot extinctions as i talked about in the first video we can take plots of extinctions and we can do so over historical time without having to use the fossil record we um you know since we've been studying things in a scientific framework we have a very good record of i say very good probably parlous but actually we have a record of when some species were alive we can plot their ex extinction through time and if we do this we can show the rate of extinction of birds mammals or other groups over historic time. So you can see an example of that as shown on the right hand side here. Okay. A number of papers do this. The image that I show you on the right here is for birds. The rate of extinction of bird species at the moment is 1.75 um, per year. And that's about 1% of extant bird species that we have lost since the year 1600. If we take that and we extrapolate that to all 20 to, two, to 100 million living species of organism, then the current rate of extinction is between 5,000 and 25,000 species per year. Or in more um, short term, I guess, um, figures, that's between 13 and 68 species are going extinct per day at the moment. Obviously, there are very, very big error bars on that and how we extrapolate from one group of organisms we study a lot to the entire diversity of life um, is, is a very complex process. But either way, that rate would mean that all life, including presumably Homo sapiens, if it continued, and that this is a very big if, but if that rate of extinction continued unabated as it is today, all species would be extinct between, between 800 and 20,000 Year, years from now. Now, obviously, don't get me wrong, that is a statistically meaningless thing to do. Extrapolating um, that extinction rate um, just into the future without thinking about what will happen when there are less species on the planet is not a sensible thing to do. But what that does show us is that um, we are at somewhere right now between a hundred and a thousand times the extinction rate that we think a typical background extinction rate over geological time was okay so extinctions occur occurring between 100 and a thousand times faster than they appear to have done in the geological record 
On the basis of that extrapolation, I do not believe it is an exaggeration to say that humans are causing and are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. Okay, we can talk about causes and um, stuff uh, in, in a bit more detail later. But I would highlight that this is the first mass extinction in the history of life in which a single species um, is causing uh, this kind of this level of biological turnover. There are many factors of anthropogenetic activity that are leading to extinctions. We think that two primary ones are habitat alteration caused by human activities and anthropogenic climate change. Okay, so that is a thing that we and our lifestyles are causing right now. Um, so I thought this was best represented by this William Plake picture here because I didn't know what else to put. It's a bit depressing, isn't it? So I suppose in any situation like this, it's worth thinking about why this matters. Now, I would make the, the case that, that there is a moral argument that we should save species just because we should, right? We should try and save biodiversity for its own sake. We, we shouldn't have to justify this in any kind of moral terms. Biodiversity um, kind of is a really, really important thing um, that we should be trying to protect, right? But even if you don't buy that, if you don't buy that moral element to this argument, biodiversity does a lot for us humans. Biodiversity um, is basically just uh, provides a series of processes that in nature support human life. We call these ecosystem services. Examples of these include that they help us limit the impact of floods through, for example, um, plants and their rooting systems. Um, the species diversity, biodiversity, helps us to um, pollinate our crops. Um, it helps us to purify our water, to keep our soil fertile, to decompose waste. We often ignore these factors until they fail. And when they fail, that is our food source or our ecosystems and our habitats and all of us will suffer. So even if you don't believe in saving biodiversity for the sake of doing so, um, just because it's important to do, if you only care about humans, and indeed, even if you don't care about all humans, if you only care about yourself, I mean, I would then maybe have a think about that stance. But even if you only care about yourself, extinction is a thing you need to care about. And the sixth mass extinction is a thing that is happening right now. So let's dig into that a little more, okay? And let's look at an example. And I thought I would finish this series of videos by looking at the insects as an example. So insects are arthropods. Arthropods are organisms that have an exoskeleton. They have jointed limbs. It's a grouping that includes the insects, um, the crustaceans, the um, millipidum. Myriapods, that's millipedes and centipedes, and the um, chelicerates, so that's arachnids and their aquatic kin, and also those extinct trilobites that I mentioned earlier. So arthropods are a really, really diverse, abundant, and in any way you measure it, they're a successful group of organisms. And we're going to be focusing, particularly in this example, on the insects. So insects are actually highly derived crustaceans. They're an example of a, a lineage of crustaceans that moved onto the land and have been really, really successful. They, um, some examples, uh, an example of an insect is shown on the left-hand side here. They're defined by having a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They've got three sets of limbs, um, which actually attach to their um, thorax, not that you can see that here. And some of their great diversity is shown in this beautiful image I stole um, on, from the New York Times on the right hand side here. They took to land once at some point before 315 million years ago. If you want to learn more about how they came onto land, look at the um, terrestrialization website. Um, they are a really, really diverse group, both in terms of their diversity of, uh, of form, their disparity, shown on the right here, and also their diversity. And that's what this cool diagram here shows by all estimates insects which are represented by either this red circle here in terms of those that have already been described or this gray circle here which are an estimate of their diversity by all estimates insects alone make up more than 50 percent of all described species of organism 
but in many estimates, they make up more than 80% of all described organisms. So they are an incredibly diverse group. To a first approximation, everything that is alive is an insect. And of the remaining described organisms, around half are actually arachnids, another really important group of organisms. But as well as being incredibly diverse, they are incredibly abundant. There are lots and lots of them. For example, um, they uh, make up a significant proportion of the animal biomass of your average rainforest ecosystem. And the insects are a great example of ecosystem services. They pollinate most of our major crops. The global economic value of the pollination services that insects provide has been valued at around $217 billion per year. So insects are this really, really important group. To date, the only mass extinction that we've learned about in this series of videos that in any way really hit them was the Permo-Triassic extinction, in which we see a number of orders go extinct. So these are major divisions of insects that are shown on this slide here. So these are some beautiful extinct forms, which include, um, you don't need to remember these, but I'll just tell you these um, uh, examples include the Megasocoptera and the Paleodictyoptera. Um, so these are um, interesting insects that look a bit like dragonflies and um, damselflies and mayflies. How closely they were related to those is a matter of active debate, but you can see them on this slide here. And these went extinct at the PT extinction. Actually, at the PT extinction, um, the, uh, the, the the actual diversity of insects didn't go down that much, but we had a big faunal turnover. The things that were alive changed. Other than that event, insects survived pretty much unscathed through all other catastrophes. Um, the other major event that in their evolution that we should mention at this point that impacts on their diversity today is that after the origin of angiosperms, that's flowering plants sometime, probably in the uh, latest Jurassic or the early Cretaceous, we had a, a co-evolution event between the insects and the plants where they both increased in diversity um, through the co-evolution of pollination. It's a whole thing that happened. And that places us in a position today where insects are vital to us, as I have outlined, and they play a vital role in most land-based food webs. So the insects are a major group, as I, I've just made the case, and they're super important to us. So the question is, how are they doing today? And the answer, I'm sorry to say, is they're doing not well at all. This image shows the results of a recent study that looked at the biomass of insects. So this is estimating using traps the, um, the total mass of all of the insects in an ecosystem. And the study did that over 27 years in 63 nature protection areas in Germany. You can see that the result on this graph here. On the y-axis is a logarithmic scale showing biomass, whereas on the x-axis, we've got the years from 1990 through to the publication of this study. The years are also color coded from dark blue to yellow, and this line here you can see goes down, showing us that the average biomass in, of insects in our ecosystem is going down. This diagram on the right shows that seasonally, um, again using the colours to show year going from dark blue through to this yellowy colour, and show that biomass is decreasing year on year um, throughout the seasons. So what do these facts and figures mean, actually mean? Well, I can tell you, for example, on the basis of that study, that there is a mid-summer decline of 82% in flying insect biomass over the 27 years of the study. 82% decline in biomass. So clearly the insects are struggling somewhat in this area. This paper that I've put on the slide here by Sanchez Bio and um, Wykus in 2019 um, suggests that more than 40% of insect species are currently threatened with extinction. I'm afraid this one is on us as humans. Habitat loss by conversion to intensive agriculture is the main driver of the declines that we're seeing in these study studies. Secondary causes after habitat loss are ag agrochemical pollutants, invasive species and climate change. There are many great study studies that are showing us that this is happening at the moment in different parts of the world and in different groups of animals. I just chose insects because they're of great interest to me. So I suppose a key question is how sure are we? And in, in any given one of these examples, there's probably a counterexample that shows that there are error bars. 
There is uncertainty in the world all the time in every scientific question. And we do have to take that into account when we're trying to decide on how to ameliorate, how to overcome this, this problem that we think we're causing. In the case of the insects, the scale, the distribution, the nature of this decline remains a topic of very active research. An example is this paper from 2020, which I put on the slide here, um, which studied the US, not Europe, and which has different patterns of um, land use to Europe. So in this case, the authors report that net abundance, so this is a change in abundance shown on this graph, um, the trends seen in the US are generally indistinguishable from zero. So that's good news. I mean, that looks like actually maybe this could be a pattern that is geographically not universal. I do note though that the authors of that study conclude, yet this result does not diminish the need for continued monitoring and could mask subtler changes in the species composition that nonetheless endanger insect provided ecosystem services. So it's a complex topic. We know that bad things are happening in many parts of the world, but maybe not all of them. If you want to dig into it further, there was an entire special issue in 2021 on this that I've linked at the bottom here. So you can check that out if you so wish. There is no easy summary, I'm afraid, but it does look like insect life is in decline in many parts of the world. So I guess a key question as I try and wrap up this series of videos is where does this leave us? In terms of insects, these animals are integral to every terrestrial food web. They are food for numerous birds, bats, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. They perform, perform roles for us, including pollination, pest control, and nutrient recycling. And we know that terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems will collapse without insects. So where does this leave us? How sure are we? I don't think it necessarily matters how sure we are. Given the consequences of the extinction of the insects, we need to make sure that we don't let this happen because actually all of human humanity will suffer greatly if the insects go extinct more broadly i think i would identify that we are increasingly certain that we are witnessing the sixth mass extinction this is often called the holocene or the anthropocene extinction we have a great deal of evidence that this is happening globally in many different groups the major question would seem to be, what can we do to counteract our impact on the living world? Um, and how can we use science to try and minimise our impact? So I think that's probably a good summary of where we are. I'm afraid it's a bit of a downer to end these videos on, so I can only apologise. But nevertheless, I hope you have found them interesting and they've given you some food for thought um, for, the, for your future. So thank you very much for your time and attention throughout these videos, and I'll see you on another website.